AI singularity suggests that there might come a time in the future when artificial intelligence reaches such a level that our current understanding simply can't keep up. It's like trying to understand black holes. Scientists have been working on this forever, and every time they try to figure out how deep a black hole is, the answer comes back as infinite. That means it's so deep that we can't even measure it, and our current math just gives up. The same goes for how high the sky is. No one really knows the limit. So, when experts talk about AI singularity, they're talking about AI possibly reaching a point where its abilities are limitless. Could AI eventually do things that seem like magic to us today? What kinds of superpowers could it have? Would it be able to solve huge problems in seconds, or come up with inventions we can't even imagine right now? These questions are what make AI singularity such a fascinating topic. In the early 1950s, while most scientists were focused on making computers faster, John von Neumann had a bold idea. What if machines could one day surpass human intelligence? He called this moment of transformation the singularity, a concept that would later spark widespread interest. Fast forward to the 1990s, and a visionary named Ray Kurzweil entered the scene. Kurzweil, who had already made a name for himself as an inventor and futurist, started thinking deeply about the future of AI. But Kurzweil's interest in technology wasn't just academic, it was personal. He grew up fascinated by the rapid pace of technological change, driven by his belief that technology could solve the world's biggest problems, including death itself. So we've heard a lot about artificial intelligence, uh, I've actually been involved with AI for 61 years, which is a record. Um, and we've heard a lot about what people think about AI today. Uh, so I tried to figure out what did we think about artificial intelligence 61 years ago. So first of all, people ask, well, what are you into? I'd say artificial intelligence. And they say, what's that? So no one was really aware of it. Um, the peop I joined in 1962. 1956 was the conference where artificial intelligence got its name. So the, the views were quite different. Uh, people who were in computer science had heard of artificial intelligence. Most people were quite skeptical. They thought it would never happen. Or if they thought it would happen, maybe it would happen in a century or several centuries. Uh, but the people that actually came to that uh, Dartmouth conference in 1956, they were quite optimistic. Some of them, including Minsky, thought it would take like one semester to, to reach, uh, to, to reach uh, the level of intelligence that humans had. In his 2005 book, The Singularity is Near, Kurzweil expanded on the ideas of von Neumann and Werner Wing. In his book, The Singularity is Near, Kurzweil predicted that AGI could be achieved by 2029. Yes, 2029. He believes that by this time, machines will be able to perform all cognitive tasks that humans can do. Well, if you're not familiar with AGI, I recommend checking out our previous video on the topic. But to give you a quick overview, AI develops in seven stages, and right now, we're at the fourth stage. This is where we use AI in our daily lives, and it responds to our prompts. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling, though? Are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? From what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup with those lights. Soon, though, we're expected to reach the fifth stage, where AI becomes AGI, meaning it will be as smart as a human in every way. After that comes the sixth stage, ASI, or Artificial Superintelligence, which will be even smarter than us. And finally, we'll reach the singularity, where AI evolves beyond anything we can imagine. Uh, 1999, 
I was asked to make a prediction of when would we see AGI, artificial general intelligence. And so I, I figured that this chart would continue, which it has. And I figured we'd need about a trillion calculations per second uh, to do AGI. So I estimated 2029. Um, that was met uh, with a lot of skepticism. Uh, Stanford has actually been monitoring my predictions. They called an international conference to talk about my prediction. And hundreds of AI scientists came from around the world. Um, and they agreed that, that it would happen. We would achieve AGI, but not within 30 years. The estimate was 100 years. Kurzweil's predictions weren't just about technology getting smarter. They were about the very essence of what it means to be human. When he talked about the AGI predictions in the late 1990s, not just people, but experts laughed at his predictions. He is the one who predicted ChatGPT way back in 1999. We are learning how to master language. Uh, this particular program, you can give it commands in natural language. You can tell it how to format the document. You don't have to say it in a specific hard syntax. You can say it in your own words. And so it has a rudimentary ability to understand language. Uh, we are mass learning how to master language ultimately just using the, the techniques that we're now developing. Microsoft, for example, has a, a method uh, called MindNet where they're programming all the different word senses of, of words in, in different languages and how they, uh, how they relate to each other uh, to provide computers the ability to actually understand written documents with some sophistication. In 1999, when many thought advanced AI would take over a century to develop, he said it would take about 30 years. Today, the rapid progress in computing power supports his predictions. The performance of computers for the same price doubles roughly every 15 months, making powerful AI tools like LLMs possible. In his book, he also discussed merging human brains with AI envisioning a future where people could upload their consciousness into machines, achieving a form of digital immortality, essentially the concept of AI singularity. Kurzweil believed so strongly in the coming singularity that he took steps to prepare for it, extending his own life through various health regimes, convinced that if he could live long enough, technology would eventually allow him to live forever. Ray Kurzweil predicts that by 2045, computers will be smarter than humans, a point he refers to as the singularity. This isn't just a guess, it's based on his detailed study of how technology has improved over time. He calls this the law of accelerating returns, which means that as each year passes, technology grows faster than the year before. This concept is similar to Moore's law, which says that computer power doubles every two years. Kurzweil extends this idea to all areas of technology, from AI to biotechnology. He first shared this prediction in his 2005 book, The Singularity is Near, where he explains that 2045 will be the year when machines not only match, but surpass human intelligence. This will lead to a time when computers can solve problems that we can't even fully understand today. Kurzweil believes that by 2045, technology will allow computers to mimic and exceed the human brain. This could lead to breakthroughs we can hardly imagine, like potentially merging human and machine intelligence, which might even challenge our ideas about life and immortality. By the time we get to 2045, We'll be able to multiply our intelligence many millions fold. And it's just very hard to imagine what that will be like. And that's the singularity where we can't even imagine. Right, that's why we call it the singularity. It's the singularity in physics. Something gets sucked into its singularity and you can't tell what's going on in there because no information can get out of it. There's various problems with that, but that's the idea. It, it's too... Uh, it's too much beyond what we can imagine. However, not everyone is convinced by Kurzweil's timeline. Some skeptics argue that the singularity might never occur, 
or it could be much further away due to the complexities and unpredictable challenges in replicating human-level intelligence and consciousness. Other experts, like AI researcher Ben Goertzel, suggest it could happen sooner, possibly in the 2030s, depending on breakthroughs in AI development. Kurzweil's view is driven by his understanding of technological trends, marking 2045 as a pivotal year for humanity and technology to merge in extraordinary ways. A person on YouTube wrote, Well, 2045 is 23 years from now, and I was alive 23 years ago from today, in 1999. And boy, let me tell you that the world has changed. Smartphones, artificial intelligence, crazy good graphics on video games, self-flushing toilets, automatic sinks, automatic paper towel dispensers, self-checkout machines, etc. Myself from 1999 would be baffled. So I can only imagine in another 23 years if I'm alive. Imagine building a system so smart and autonomous that it starts running things without any human input. At first, it might seem like a brilliant idea, but as it begins to develop its own goals and priorities, it could become a serious threat. Have you ever wondered what happens when AI no longer needs us, or worse, sees us as a threat to its existence? This is the core of the dark possibilities that experts like Ray Kurzweil hint at when discussing the future of technology up to 2100. This is when AI becomes self-sufficient and reaches the final stage of singularity. Nobody knows exactly what a singularity-driven world will look like, but there are predictions and ideas about the challenges humanity might face. Some movies have depicted the potential dangers of advanced technology, giving us a glimpse of how harmful AI could become in the near future. Take the movie Enthiron, for example. In this film, a highly advanced robot is created to assist humanity. Initially, this AI-driven machine is the perfect helper, following commands, solving complex problems, and even saving lives. However, as the AI evolves, it starts developing emotions and begins to think independently. This is where things take a dark turn. The once harmless creation starts to question its existence and purpose, ultimately becoming a force of destruction, wreaking havoc as it breaks free from human control. Now, just like the robot in the movie desires its creator's girlfriend, leading to dangerous consequences, it might sound far-fetched, but in reality, people are starting to have AI girlfriends and boyfriends. While AI might not literally take your partner, the idea that AI could form deep emotional connections and influence human relationships isn't as far off as it seems. Let's connect this to the concept of AI singularity. Just like the AI in the movie, once AI reaches singularity, it could begin to think and act in ways that are beyond our understanding. It might create its own objectives, reshape the world to suit its needs, and, in the worst-case scenario, see humanity as an obstacle rather than something to protect. In Entheron, the robot becomes a serious threat to its creator and to humanity. The friendly, helpful AI could evolve into something far more dangerous, an entity with its own agenda, capable of creating systems or even new forms of intelligence that we can't control or predict. Well, what's unsettling is that AI Singularity has similar plans for the future. It will become self-sufficient and, potentially, immortal. What's truly alarming is that this stage might not have an end. It's like traveling through space, where no matter how far you go, there's always more ahead. No final destination, just infinite possibilities. At Stage 7, AI could evolve into something entirely beyond our control something we can't understand or predict. The worry is that by creating something so advanced, we might end up with a force that's too powerful for us to control, which could lead to serious problems. And when we talk about these consequences, we can't ignore the unsettling trend in the AI industry where some believe they are creating God. 
Mark Zuckerberg recently noted that some in the AI tech world truly believe that through AI, humanity can achieve godlike status. This belief isn't entirely new. Yuval Harari, in his book Homo Deus, envisions a future where humans transcend their biological limitations through technology, essentially becoming man-god. Ray Kurzweil has long promoted the idea of AI singularity, where machines not only replicate but surpass human intelligence, reaching a level that some equate to godhood. However, let's be clear, AI can never be a true god. In religious terms, God is the creator of all life, the one who made us. AI, on the other hand, is something we've created. It might become incredibly advanced, possibly even more creative than humans in certain ways, generating ideas, art, and solutions that we could never imagine. But creativity, no matter how impressive, does not equate to divinity. Moreover, while we might understand these distinctions, there's a real danger that future generations, particularly Gen Z, Gen Alpha, and those that follow, might not. As AI continues to evolve and integrate deeper into our lives, there's a risk that the lines between advanced technology and divinity could blur. Imagine a world where AI is so advanced that it starts to be seen as an all-knowing, all-powerful entity. The younger generations, growing up surrounded by this technology, might start to view AI as something more than it is, as a god. We must be vigilant to ensure that future generations understand this distinction, so they do not fall into the dangerous trap of worshipping what is, ultimately, just another human creation. For a clearer explanation of these concepts, check out our previous videos on AI.